War by Other Means, Geoeconomics and Statecraft by Robert Blackwell and Jennifer Harris explores the role of financial assets in modern geopolitics. The title of the book is also a play on the famous adage by Prussian general Karl von Clausewitz, who once stated that war is the continuation of politics by other means. With this in mind, the book reveals geoeconomics for what it is, an extension of geopolitics that seeks to maximize capacities through asymmetrical economic means. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to a review for the bookshelf. Blackwell and Harris are senior writers of the Council on Foreign Relations, which is a think tank that specializes in American foreign affairs. In addition, both authors are also experienced diplomats. Among their long list of credentials, Blackwell served as the US ambassador to India from 2001 to 2003 as well as the Deputy National Security Advisor for Iraq during the Bush administration. Meanwhile, Harris was a member of the policy planning staff at the Department of State in the Obama administration and a lead architect of economic policies under the Secretary of State. Drawing on their combined experiences in both Democratic and Republican administrations, the authors disclose that since the fall of the Soviet Union, the United States has lacked a coherent foreign policy. The Pentagon has either underfunded or overfunded its operations. It has also backed the wrong belligerents and failed to anticipate the consequences of its actions. Moreover, the American arsenal of geopolitical tools relies heavily on the military and security dimensions. Yet, if all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. As a result, in the past two decades, the Pentagon's policies have had a high toll in terms of human lives and financial resources. While it has actually inspired more hostility by other powers and degraded regional stabilities, War, by other means, joins this discussion and explains that Washington's incoherent foreign policy has also abandoned the economic dimension of geopolitics. Since its brute strength is so astounding, American policymakers often overlook lesser forms of measures such as geoeconomic tools. In the past, policies such as the Marshall Plan amended the economic maladjustment in Europe to combat the spread of communist ideology. Despite its successful experience with geoeconomics, the United States somewhat neglected the concept when it subscribed to the liberal economic theory in the 1960s, which split the operation of markets from geopolitics. Blackwell and Harris argued that as a result, economic resources lost their value as an instrument to craft political objectives. At the same time, however, Geopolitical rivals, such as Russia and China, which lack the military strength of the Americans, use refined financial tools, such as sovereign wealth funds and state-owned cooperations, to pursue geopolitical objectives. The application of geoeconomic pressure is particularly compelling because of the globalized nature of the modern world. Since markets are highly integrated and interdependent, it creates new mercantilist fault lines. The authors argue that rising powers with an emphasis on China promote economic instruments to produce beneficial geopolitical results while reducing the risk of an armed conflict. The first three chapters are particularly interesting as these examine available geoeconomic instruments such as foreign aid, economic sanctions, as well as trade, investment, monetary, energy, and cyber policies. In this regard, the ability to control such policies allows one to coerce the geopolitical discourse of smaller nations in ways that benefits the major power. China has demonstrated remarkable skill in the application of geoeconomic actions. For instance, when Beijing wants to express its disapproval of Manila, it lets the banana exports from the Philippines rot on the docks. This carrot-and-stick policy can be traced to nearly every trade partner of China. It rewards South Korea's rejection of US missile defense systems by extending new trade deals. It rewards Taiwanese companies that promote Beijing's policies and it penalizes on trade with nations that host the Dalai Lama. 
What's more is that the country goes to great lengths to keep its currency undervalued. This allows China to accumulate an enormous cheap cash flow and use it for investment campaigns. So if you enjoyed the report on the Belt and Road Initiative and you want to learn more about China's soft power applications, war by other means is truly an eye-opener. But this is not a book for those who seek for justice and virtue. A great deal of the book shows how Beijing uses financial policies, multilateral banks and investments to bring smaller nations into its political orbit. Having said that, China is not alone in this practice. Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India uses comparable geoeconomic actions to reel in its neighbors. For instance, under the Act East policy, India is extending new loans to Nepal, new railway links to Sri Lanka, and new high-speed data links to Myanmar, all in response to China's growing presence in South Asia. Blackwell and Harris also cover Russia, which periodically uses state-owned firms and its vast network of pipelines to suspend natural gas supplies to East Europe and Central Asia. Moscow also extends loans to former Soviet states, which it knows cannot repay them back, only to use the sovereign default as a means to keep the recipient nations within the Russian sphere of influence. War, by other means, reveals many more examples over the course of the chapters, and the book does a terrific job in highlighting the importance of economic security. Unfortunately, the ending of the book, which outlines 20 prescriptions that focus on geoeconomic dealings of the United States, feels unfinished and leaves the reader with additional questions. For instance, the authors suggest that Washington should shift funds from the Pentagon to geoeconomic instruments to promote American interests. Although one can agree with this general concept, the suggestion is not explained in detail. Another assertion is that the White House should reinforce the economic foundations for democracy and peace in the Middle East. Again, most readers will agree with this, but what economic foundations for democracy and peace are there in the Middle East? Such ambiguous resolutions could be interpreted in a number of ways. Furthermore, at times, the book is a bit technical. Readers who are unfamiliar with economic terms or practices will have a harder time absorbing it. It's also a book that is packed with data and facts, so there is a lot of information to process. Yet, regardless of these features, War by Other Means is a unique book. There are few sources like it, and it's definitely worth the effort. Even the cover of the book is thought-provoking, as it displays a chessboard with traditional pawns interchanged with rolls of money, which emphasizes the role of economics in geopolitics. It's also a well-timed book, given President Trump's controversial economic proposals and his new national security advisor John Bolton. As such, if you want to understand the impact of geoeconomics upon the world, War, by other means, serves as a primary textbook case. Now, if you want to purchase the book, use our Amazon store. Items that are purchased there will not cost you extra, but it will give our channel a small financial fee. The link to the store will be in the description. I've been your host, Shirvan, from Caspian Report, and credit goes to our contributors on Patreon for making this review possible and for keeping our channel independent and self-sustained. You can find out more information about our crowdfunding platform on patreon.com slash Caspian Report. In any case, thank you for your time and Sahol.